ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय सो डे आफ्टर टुमारो इट इज बुद्धदाय एकादशी ऑन संडे एंड हेयर इज द नरेशन फ्रॉम द बुद्धदाय एकादशी कथा बुद्धदाय एकादशी व्हिच इज द पौष शुक्ल एकादशी द पायस एंड सेंटली युधिष्ठिर महाराज सेड O oh Lord, you have so nicely explained to us the wonderful glories of the Safala Ekadashi, which occurs during the dark fortnight Krishna Paksh, which was the last Ekadashi of the month we we observed it two weeks ago, and now it is the Putra Ekadashi. So this. comes in the month of posh december and january now please be merciful to me and explain to me the details of the ekadashi that occurs in the light fortnight shukla or gora paksh of this month what is its name and what deity is to be worshiped on that sacred day o purushottam o rishikesh please also tell me how you can be pleased on this day Lord Krishna then replied O saintly king for the benefit of all humanity I shall now tell you how to observe fasting on the Paus Shukla Ekadashi as previously explained everyone should observe the rules and regulations of the Ekadashi vrat to the very best of their ability This injunction also applies to the Ekadashi named Putrada which destroyed all sins and elevates one to the spiritual abode the supreme personality of godhead shri narayan the original personality is the worshipable deity of the ekadashi and for his faithful devotees he happily fulfills all desires and awards full per- perfection thus among all the animate and inanimate beings in the three worlds lower middle and higher planetary system there is no better personality than lord narayan o king now i shall narrate to you the history of putrada ekadashi which removes all kinds of sins and makes one famous and learned there was a kingdom named bhadravati which was ruled by king suketu man his queen was the famous shaibya because he had no son he spent a long time in anxiety thinking if i have no son who will carry on my dynasty in this way the king meditated in a religious attitude for a very long time thinking where should i go what should i do how can i get a pious son or putra in this way king suketu man could find no happiness anywhere in his kingdom even in his own palace and soon he was spending more and more time inside his wife's palace gloomily thinking only of how he could get a son thus both the king and the queen were in great distress even when they offered tarpan that is the oblations of water to their forefathers their mutual misery made them think that it was as undrinkable as boiling water they thus thought that they would have no descendants to offer tarpan to them when they died and thus became lost souls ghosts and their forefathers uh sorry ghosts the king and queen uh i seem to have lost it please bear with me yeah i'll read it again that both the king and the queen were in great distress even when they offered the tarpan their mutual misery made them think it was as drink undrinkable as boiling water they thought that they would have no descendants to offer tarpan to them when they passed and the king and queen became more and more miserable and neither ministers nor friends nor even loved ones could cheer them up to the king the his elephants and horses and infantry were no solace and at last he became practically inert and helpless the king thought to himself it is said that without a son marriage is wasted indeed for a family man with no son both in his heart and his splendid house remain vacant and miserable bereft of a son a man cannot liquidate his debts and he owes that he owes his forefathers the demigods and to the other human beings therefore every married man should endeavor to beget a son thus he will become famous within this world and at last attain the auspicious celestial realms 
As one is the proof of pious activities a man performed in the past 100 lifetimes and such a person achieves a long duration of life in this world along with good health and great wealth. Possessing sons and grandsons in this lifetime proves that one has worshipped Lord Vishnu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the past. The great blessings of sons, wealth and sharp intelligence can be achieved only by worshipping the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna. That is my opinion. Thinking thus, the king had no peace. He remained in anxiety day and night from morning to evening and from the time he lay down to sleep at night until the sun rose in the morning. His dreams were equally full of anxiety. Suffering such constant anxiety and apprehension, King Suketuman decided to end his misery by committing suicide. But he realized that suicide throws a person into hellish conditions of rebirth and he abandoned that idea. Seeing that he was gradually destroying himself by his all-consuming anxiety over the lack of a son, the king at last mounted his horse and left for the dense forest alone. No one, not even the priests and Brahmins of the palace, knew where he had gone. In that forest, which was filled with deers and birds and other animals, King Suketuman wandered, wandered aimlessly, noting all the different kinds of trees and shrubs such as the fig, bale, fruit, date, palm, jackfruit, bakula, Palash trees, all were beautifully decorated with fruits and flowers. He saw deers, tigers, wild boar, lions, monkeys, snakes, huge bull elephants in a rut, cow elephants with their calves and four tusked elephants with their mates close by. There were cows, jackals, rabbits, leopards and hippopotamus hippopotamus Beholding all these animals accompanied by their mates and offsprings, the king remembered his own menageries, especially his palace elephants, and became so sad that he absent-mindedly wandered into their very midst. Suddenly the king heard a jackal howl in the distance. Startled, he began wandering about, looking around in all directions, Soon it was midday and the king started to tire. He was tormented by hunger and thirst also. He thought, what sinful deed could possibly have done so that I am, I am now forced to suffer like this with my throat parched and burning and my stomach empty and rumbling. I have pleased the devas, the demigods with numerous fire sacrifices and abundant worship, devotional worship. I have given many gifts and delicious sweets and charities to all the worthy brahmins also. And I have taken care of my subjects as though they were my very own children. Why then am, am I suffering so? What unknown sins have come to bear fruit and torment me in this dreadful way? Absorbed in these thoughts, King Suketuman struggled forward and eventually, due to his pious credits, he came upon a beautiful lotus bearing pond that resembled the famous lake Mansarovar. It was filled with aquatics including crocodiles and many varieties of fish and graced with varieties of lilies and lotuses. The beautiful lotuses had opened to the sun and swans, cranes and ducks swam, swam happily in its waters. Nearby were many attractive ashrams and there resided many saints and sages who could fulfill the desire of anyone indeed. They wished everyone well. When the king saw this, his right arm and right eye began to quiver. A shakun sign for a male that something auspicious was about to happen. As the king dismounted his horse and stood before the sages he, who sat on the shore of the pond, who sat on the shore of the pond, uh, he saw that they were chanting the holy names of God on Japa beads. The king paid his obeisances and joining his palms addressed them with glorified praises. Observing the respect the king offered them, the sages said, We are very pleased with you. O king, kindly tell us why you have come here. What is on your mind? Please inform us what is your heart's desire. The king replied, O oh, great sages, who are you? What are your names? Surely your presence reveals that you are auspicious saints. Why have you come to this beautiful place? Please tell me everything. The sages replied, O oh, king, we are known as the ten 
विश्व देवस द सन्स ऑफ विश्व वसु सत्य कृतु दक्ष काल काम धृति पुरुर्वा माद्रवा एंड कुरु वी हैव कम हेयर टू दिस वेरी लवली पॉन्ट टू बे द मंथ ऑफ माघ विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज द माधव मास इन द वैष्णव कैलेंडर विल सोन बी हेयर इन फाइव डेज from the mag nakshatra and today is the famous putruda ekadashi one who desires a son should strictly observe this particular ekadashi the king said i have tried so hard to have a son if you great sages are pleased with me kindly grant the boon of having a good son the very meaning of putruda the sages replied is giver of a putra by a son so please observe a complete fast on this ekadashi day if you do so then by our blessings and by the mercy of lord krishna keshava invested in us surely you will obtain a son on the advice of the vishwadevas the king observed the auspicious fast day of putruda ekadashi according to the established rules and regulations and on the dwadashi after breaking his fast he paid obeisances again and again to all of them soon after suketu man returned to his palace and united with his queen shaibya immediately became pregnant and exactly as the vishwadevas had predicted a bright faced beautiful son was born to them in due course of time he became famous as an heroic prince prince and the king gladly pleased his noble son by making him his successor The son of Suketu Man took care of his subjects very consens- conscientiously, just as if they were his own children. In conclusion, O Yudhishthir, one who wishes to fulfil his desires should strictly observe Putra Ekadashi. While on this planet, who strictly observes this Ekadashi will surely obtain a son, and after death he will achieve liberation. Anyone who even reads or hears the glories of putra ekadashi obtains the merits earned by performing a horse sacrifice it is to benefit all the humanity that i have explained all this to you the sense the narration of the glories of posh shukla ekadashi or the putra ekadashi from the bhavishya puran of vedavyasadev i am tatsat re krishna